Hey, I'm Danny the Plumber, and today I'm gonna to be working with this double sink, replacing the basket strainer here. I'm gonna keep the garbage disposal on this side. I'm also gonna be replacing the two-part waste, the trap, all the way back to the dirty arm there. And the inch and a half tail piece that connects to the basket strainer here. Let's get started. All right, today I'm gonna to be converting this brass two-part waste and trap over to an ABS trap. I used to like the brass traps and two-part waste better than ABS, but over the years I found out the ABS actually lasts longer, gets clogged less, and it's just an overall better product. You can see a tiny little indication of a leak right here, and there's some white stuff. And it was also leaking in the slip joint washer and nut here. I can tighten it up, I can fix it, I can get some extra life out of this uh, system here, this brass system, but I just really prefer ABS. It's just overall cheaper, better, lasts longer, I just like it more. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is grab myself a small bucket to get under the trap here. I'm gonna spin counterclockwise on this flange tail piece here and remove it. This is a tailpiece gasket. It's got a special little lip on there. A little different than the regular slip joint washers. There's a regular slip joint washer. You can see the difference between the two. This has almost got a, it's a lip around it there. This is the two-part waste T that I'm removing here. Next, I'm gonna remove the basket strainer. This dial has three bolts and a screw that'll screw off like this. Other styles will just have one nut, a bigger one like this with some um, flat edges that will screw onto uh, some threads in here. Either way, we can just take that right off. And now we can press up. And from up top, we've removed the basket strainer. Next, we're gonna be reusing this garbage disposal tee. We're not replacing the garbage disposal today, as I said before, but I do wanna clean this up right here where we're gonna be sealing again with the subjoint nut and washer. So clean that up. I'm gonna be reusing this brass uh, nipple in the wall. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll clean these threads and especially the face of this. You may wanna hit the face of this with a file. That way it just takes any sharp edges off. You can wire brush the threads if you feel so inclined. All right, now for the fun part. 
Here is my basket strainer. It's just a quick mount. I do like the ones with the three screws, like the one we removed earlier versus the one with the large nut. It's just a little easier to install in my opinion. We've got our new two part waste in a bag here that we'll obviously have to cut down to size and I'll show you exactly how that's done as well as our ABS P trap right here. I also have a inch and a half ABS flanged tail piece here. It's got a little flange on it. Mine's double ended just because I use so many of them, but it doesn't have to be. I usually cut it in half and use half. Uh, good idea sometimes, and I don't think I need it today, but carry also an extension tube if you guys need to uh, extend any of these parts a bit. You can use this and cut this down to your size. Not sure if we will are gonna need that. Probably not today. The correct way to install the slip joint nut and washer is it's it's beveled and so there's a flat lip or flat edge I'll say around there and the bevel part goes down. So if you take your nut and you slide it on, this flat part would go into the nut that way and the bevel part would go down like that. So if you were screwing it into something, you can see that the beveled end pushes in place really nicely and creates that seal once that nut is tightened up on it, like that. Now if it were the other way, obviously, it would not work and it's even hard to kind of get on. It just wouldn't work as well. You've got a big gap in there at that point. So beveled side, like that. Beveled side down into the male threads, always. Like so. Next, I wanna install the basket strainer. So I'm just gonna clean up the old putty off of here on two sides. We're gonna give it a nice clean area to mount the new one on. Once that's ready, let's go ahead and set the basket strainer in place. In this box, we've got the top drain stopper and the whole basket strainer itself with the supplied uh, brass slip joint nut and our basket strainer washer, also known as a flange washer, inch and a half flanged washer. All right, let's remove the screws. A little bit to loosen that up. Okay. One metal flange there. One um, cardboard gasket. And our rubber gasket. Now, a lot of people think that the gasket goes on the top here and sits in like that. It may work and it may not leak, but as that is incorrect. Food will get all stuck in here and it'll begin to mold over. It's just too large of a gap. The correct way is to install the black rubber underneath. What you wanna do here is apply a bead of plumber's putty. I'm using stay put plumber's putty. That's what I always use. I've got the uh, seven pound of homeowners. You probably don't need that large of a can. Grab a little rock of it. You wanna take it like that, put it around the whole thing. I'm a little shy. 
but that's okay. I'll just simply add some more. Right in there. Get it all into place. And we're ready to mount that in the sink here. You're gonna to wanna to see a little bit of the plumber's putty pushing out on the edges here. That's how you know you've got enough in there. Once that's set in place, just by pushing it down, I'm gonna grab our four items here. And I'm gonna screw these down just a bit. A rotor gasket, our metal flange, and our cardboard gasket. Let's go underneath the sink. I'm gonna get these screws, these bolts, pretty far down in this direction. And I'll show you why in a second. So you can see the height of them. Okay, first thing to install is the rubber gasket. Black rubber gasket, number one. Number two, the cardboard gasket. And that just is a anti-slip gasket. Next, with the groove facing down, that one, to receive this guy. This guy will Kind of just thread in place. Once we've got that thing threaded as far as we can go up, we are ready to screw these things at an equal rate once I've got it as hand tight as possible there's a little groove in here for a screw driver. We can tighten those up a bit more equally. You can see some of the putty starting to push out. That's a good indication around the sides here that we are just about tight enough. And that should do it. Up on top, you can see how much putty is spilled out. That's a great thing. Remove that, and we can actually save that for later. All right. Next, what I like to do is get the trap on, at least partially. Here's my inch and a half ABS. P-trap, also known as a tube trap. And here are some of the parts. We won't be using this trap adapter today uh, if this was coming out ABS, I could glue on to my ABS pipe that adapter right there. But since I've got the same threads and it's brass and it's in good condition, I'm going to be using the existing. So we can throw that part away. Okay, the first thing I want to do is grab the trap arm here, slide with the threads 
going to the face here, one slip joint washer, excuse me, one slip joint nut downward. Grab another nut in the opposite direction, install it there with one slip joint washer. And this is just gonna be a temporary action that I do. We're gonna install that just very lightly, hand tight in there. Now the trap arm is installed, ready to accept the other part of the trap here. There's two directions, a longer and a shorter. The shorter one goes with the trap arm and attaches with the slip joint nut like that. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just getting my um, angles and heights correct so I can install the two part waste, which is the other part of the drainage system here. Okay, next I wanna install my two part waste. It comes with more slip joint nuts and washers. It comes with the two part waist long arm right there that we are definitely gonna be cutting a lot of that down for this specific application at least. The two part waist T. And you guess it, more slip joint nuts and washers. Okay, time to install the T. So what I do is I grab this thing, I tuck it into there, I raise this one up with zero gaskets as far as it can go, and we are lucky that this height was correct. Sometimes we either have to cut a bit of this down or add a little more with an extension tube. And the extension tube or extension tailpiece is just can be cut down to sides, has more nuts and washers, and we can simply extend that longer if we need to. Today we don't have to. Here's a tool that I use to cut made by Rigid ABS tubing. It accepts uh, inch and a quarter here and inch and a half, which is what we're using today. This makes it really easy. You don't need this. You can use some sort of hacksaw or any uh, other saw you would like. Even a handsaw, a regular handsaw will work just fine for this stuff. Okay, back to it. Next, I'm just gonna get my, my heights correct. So I'm gonna shove this thing way long, obviously, into there. But I just wanna see what height this one's gonna be. So simply, I'm gonna put it right there. We're gonna give this guy a little, a little bit of slopage going downhill this way, just a little bit like that. So up on that side. I'm gonna see where, when this is flush up here, where I have to cut it. And I don't even take a measurement, I do it with my eyes. And so I know it's gonna line up right in here, the bottom of this guy right there. And so with a little slope, I'll put my finger on it, just like this. I'll take my tool, I'll put it in place. I'll go right there. Cutter goes one direction on this guy. And I should have the exact measurement when I'm done here. If I'm a little bit short, I could always use a tailpiece extension or a tube extension here, but I think we're gonna be just fine today. In our basket trainer box, they supplied a brass slip joint nut and a flanged tailpiece gasket there. And with our pre-cut eyed piece, and remember you can use a tape measure, maybe easier for beginners to take that measurement there, but I did not. We'll slide this out of the way a little bit, 
get that into place. And now, now we're ready for a measurement of this guy. Okay, it's time to take the measurement for the two-part waist. Now, we can do the same thing we did and kind of um, put your finger on this one like this, slide it into there, try to line those two up and, and, and do a measurement that way. Or we can take a tape measure and we can either go from the left side of this pipe to the left side of this pipe or the right side and the right side here. Either way, it's the same thing and we will take a measurement. I'll go on the left of this pipe and the left of this one and we'll take a measurement, making sure that this is in fact shoved all the way in. The distance between there and there is eight inches, eight and three quarter inches. So now I will take eight and three quarter inches off of this end of the pipe. Eight and three quarter right there, ready to cut that guy. Ream if needed. And you can see everything is gonna line up. So now that we know everything lines up, we've got a slight angle going downward on that one. Everything fits properly. What we're gonna do is remove this stuff and get all the proper slip joint nuts and washers in place. I do wanna note for this one, since it is brass here, I do like to install a brass slip joint washer in it instead of the plastic one. The plastic one will probably work, but I found that it is definitely prone to leaks uh, when there's the plastic going onto the metal. So I like to use a brass slip joint nut in this case. Okay, so let's disconnect everything. One more thing to add, you wanna make sure that this part of the trap doesn't go so far back into the dirty arm here that it's going to block part of the drainage in here or the vent line. So this thing can't go too far in there. Um, they do make trap adapters also uh, that would prevent that thing from going too far in. Um, it gives you less leeway to play in here, but they do make those and in some states that is a uh, code. Okay, making sure my gasket is still in there, which it is, we're ready to screw that one into place. We'll go hand tight, just a little more, doesn't have to be too much. Next, let's pull this one off and get, instead of the plastic, let's go with the brass slip joint nut. Our gasket goes onto there. Slide that one on. We'll get that one hand tight for now because I may want to adjust again. Next, slip joint nut on the garbage disposal elbow. One more cleaning. Ready for a slip joint washer or gasket. Like that. Same for the other side of the flange tailpiece. We'll go with the um, threads down here and a supplied blue slip joint washer up about that far 
Next, two, our uh, two-part waist tee, blue washer into position. And I like to slide that into position, make sure it's correct, you know, looks about equal distance on all sides before I start threading my uh, nut into place. Hand tight, only for now. Ready for our second part of the two-part waist, the elbow. We'll slide another nut facing this way. I'm gonna receive it on here, slip joint washer. This one up into here. We already have our um, blue washer in place there. Slide it in, slide it in. Get that one in place, that one in place. All right, ready for our trap. We'll take another slip joint nut, a slip joint washer, beveled in down, slide that into place. Get our trap, and there are two different directions. Again, long side goes to the two part waist. And now, you can see we're a little short here. So I'll just simply pull this guy that we did only hand tight out a bit. I like to start with uh, tightening this one. I find it easier. Then I'll go to this side, back to here, over to here, and we'll hit the rest of them. If you've got pretty strong hands, there's no need for a wrench. If you don't, feel free to Tighten that up just a bit with the wrench. This ABS does not have to be too tight. Just like that. My hands are sufficient for the plastic ones. For the metal brass one in the back, I will tighten that up a bit more with my wrench. There it is. We are done. Okay, at this point, we're ready to run some water and test it. As you can see, I had a little more plumber's putty seep out and that is totally normal. It may continue to seep out for a day or two. Clean that up. And what I like to do is just run a little water on both sides. I'll go start on that side and I'll check. Then I'll go to the other side, run with some water. That right side is testing all of this here. That left side is testing this. And of course, both of them end up going down there. We're looking for leaks here, even small leaks in all of these nuts. And of course, up in here, we don't want to see any water back there. Once I am satisfied with that test, I'm gonna plug both sides. This is what I do every time at a customer's house. I'm gonna plug both sides, fill them up about halfway, unplug them, and run the garbage disposal. 
This way it will rattle if there's a leak. It's going to rattle with that garbage disposal on a bit. And I want to see a leak here when I'm at the job, not tomorrow when it's caused $10,000 worth of damage. So if it's going to leak, it's going to leak on me now with the garbage disposal running full of water on two sides of the sink with all that pressure from the two sides. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that up now. All right, once I've got them about halfway filled, I'm going to go ahead and run the garbage disposal side. Remove the two plugs. Turn the garbage disposal on and check for leaks. Checking for leaks up here, 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 every joint. We're fully drained. And I'm pretty satisfied that we have no leaks. Sometimes I'll do this uh, two times. And if there's a leak, I'll do it until I have no leak. You can just, if there is a leak on a one of your nuts or something, go ahead and hit it with a channel locks or something like that and uh, tighten it up a bit more and it should correct that leak. Thank you guys very much for watching that video. Please hit that thumbs up button and give it a like. It helps me to continue to make these type of videos. Go to my channel to see some more how-to tips and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys.